uh, topic is about employees and subcontractors. We have a, a panel here that uh, we're going to get everybody to introduce themselves and uh, uh, say what company they're with and also if they have subs or employees or both and um, kind of lead a discussion on, you know, is it better to have subs versus employees, what the pitfalls are, what some of the high marks are. So, Andy, if you can start with... Sure. Um, Andy After with After Remodeling. I have both um, employees and subcontractors. My name is Alan Bowen with Lighthouse Insurance Services, and I'm an agent. I work with Mike Thomas. Uh, Kurt Burkhardt, Chesapeake Roofing, Windows and Siding Incorporated. I have all subs except for me and my wife. I'm Michael Capers with Sterling Mirror and Glass. We are generally a subcontractor, and we have all employees that do work for us. Okay. So, um, Andy, start with you. So in your experience with using you know subs and employees which one have you found is a little bit easier to to deal with uh, none of them are easy <laughs> um, there's challenges for both and they're sort of for my business there's uh, pigeonholes for subcontractors and employees for specialties for like plumbing electrical my employees can't do that mechanical work since i'm a general contractor i have that under my roof uh, but also I have to manage uh, job sites, so I need employees to manage the job sites. Basically, um, I call it a lead carpenter system. So I have um, four lead carpenters in the field, and then I have one uh, project manager, supervisor in the office. Okay. Um, Kurt, you primarily uh, use subcontractors. Where, where do you go to find your co subcontractors that you use? Uh, well, I've had mine one for 15 and one for 20 years so it's been a while since I've had them uh, and the other one's been 12 years so it's just referrals actually from where I buy my materials is where I got the ones that I did get so you know the guys that um, I buy from Lansing Corporation and I buy from the Roof Center and you know when I was looking for a new sub I asked them and they they deal with the sub, you know people all the time so that, that's where I got my leads for them. Okay. John, you said that, that you have subs and employees. Michael. But Michael, no, I'm um, sorry. That's all right. No, we, are, we act as a subcontractor. Okay. Andy, for example. So okay. we basic people rely on us to do the component work, which is glass work that they need. But all of our people, are, you know, the people who do our installation work are all our employees. Okay. So we don't subcontract out that part. Okay, so Andy, so you use him as a subcontractor. Um, do you run into any problems with your uh, customers if their people, if their employees are at your job site or, or at someone's home uh, installing no, something as you know compared to them being your employees? No, not at all. Again, because I normally have a supervisor on the job site that facilitates. The installations of subcontractors because I'm in people's homes it's not new construction um, so when I'm in people's homes I've got to secure the property when I leave I got to make sure that I do uh, there isn't you know that the subcontractors know what they're doing so I have to have someone there to direct them uh, because subcontractors as good as they can be they still need some type of direction and always have questions so but as far as the relationship um, I would call my subcontractors trade partners, where I don't just look for different subcontractors all the time. I, I keep a pool of consistent subcontractors that I've had years of experience with in, in a working relationship. Okay. Um, Mike, with your employees, where do you typically go to, to get your employees from? Oh, um, probably it being, well, first of all, we don't hire people that often. You know, we typically try to hire people and the right candidates, train them, and then, you know, it's usually an environment where they're thrive and successful and that they can do the work that we want, which also kind of plays into what Andy said because not only does he not, and he's typical of a lot of our customers, not only does he have the same subcontractors, we tend to have the same companies. So a lot of our guys are used to working for a lot of the same contractors. You know, may not be every day or every week, but on a, a normal basis. So it would be like, oh, we're we're doing a job for them or them or them. And so 
but to answer your direct question, you know, pretty much sometimes by referral, sometimes by Craigslist, you know, basically all, wherever you can find somebody competent. But unfortunately, we can't go to a, we don't have any particular supply house, for example, where they're going to be able to say, oh, well, here's guys that are available. We're really going to have to train people with no knowledge in our industry. So how, how long, would, I guess, the, the tenure of your employees, what's kind of the average? Um, well, more recently, I would say probably five, six years at this point. Okay. So we're on a much better trend. But things have changed a lot over the last 10 years. So we've sort of, I think we have a much better um, environment. And I think that we also hire better people. So we don't have any real, we have really no turnover. Okay. Um, Andy, with the um, hiring of the subs and the employees, I mean, from, you know, uh, Mike said that he's, you know, he, he has to hire them, he has to train them and groom them and things like that with, with the subs versus employees. How do you um, deal with that? I mean, I know you're saying that you're getting uh, different subs and you're using the same ones, but how do you go out and find that good sub? Uh, usually through other subs, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, any any decent sub, you know, birds of a feather type thing, sticks with you know other quality subs. And usually in that venue, like for me for remodeling, my subs mostly remodel. I mean, they make, they do move, new construction as well, but most of them, again, it's sort of where we are in in our, in the building industry as a remodeling company. Okay. Um. Alan, with the, the insurance, kind of what's the, um, the main difference with uh, employees versus subcontractors with, uh, you know, it, it, if you're an Andy? Well, with your employees, obviously you have everything involved with managing through human resources, benefits, uh, the workman's comp that you're paying. You have your own general liability, so you don't have any questions about that as long as you're doing things right. If you bring on a subcontractor, what you have to do is make sure they have that to protect yourself. You want to protect your insurance, you want to protect your workman's comp, because the way workman's comp, the state and the companies look at it, if they're working for you and they don't have it, they're your employee. And when you invoice them, you have to prove that they have it or you have to pay based on what you paid them as a subcontractor. And I see it all the time. And it's, uh, it's something you really don't want to run into that bill at the end of the thing where you don't have proof of insurance for them. So as a, as a you know, uh, business owner, I mean, what, what is it that we should be asking the, the subcontractors for? If, if, if they have, uh, you have to get a certificate of insurance show, showing they have a workman's comp policy and a general liability policy. You're, you're hiring them because they're covering that cost as opposed to you covering that cost. But if I'm, if I'm a one-man show, do I have to have workman's comp on myself? No, you can exclude yourself and you can provide that form. You just can't have anybody else on the job. Okay. And a lot of people, they'll, they'll try to go with the general liability, but they'll bring a helper along. And that doesn't, at the end, that doesn't cover them. Right. You look like you had a question. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, Department of Labor and the IRS can be cracking down a lot. Uh, or attempting to crack down a lot on how we define a subcontract and how we decide, define an employee. Does that have any effect on your business? Me? Yep. Uh, well, I'm not hiring people for what you're doing. Obviously, I'm in the insurance side. Well, I mean, and as far as the, the way we have to provide certificates and gain our certificates. The way they look at it, if, and I had this come up with a, with a truck driver, trucking company the other day, and he hired employees as a driver. And he says, well, is he my employee? Because they want to look at it as a 1099 situation. And I asked, well, does he have his own company? No. Does he drive your truck? Yes. Does he work for anybody else? No, he's your employee. Right. You, you, you can say he's not your employee, but he's your employee as far as the government's concerned. He's using your materials, your equipment, and I think one of the other in one of the other things it says that if if you are con basically controlling him hour by hour or day by day on what he does on a daily basis, he's no longer a subcontractor. He's your employee. Yeah. If if you have that much control, he's your employee. 
that's how that's that's what that team seems to be the shroud they're trying to break. So if, a lot of the um, you brought up the Department of Labor. So for the state of Maryland, if you go through an unemployment audit, if you don't have invoices from that subcontractor and you don't have proof that they are independent, then they're going to make you pay unemployment on it. So if you're paying somebody by the hour as a sub, un Maryland unemployment, even though you're covered from an insurance standpoint because they have their own workman's comp and everything else, I've had it to where the unemployment um, auditor says, by, by our guidelines, the state of Maryland, that person is an employee, even though IRS says that they're, that they're a contractor, state of Maryland is a little bit different. Um, so, you know, you definitely got to be careful with that. I would tell you to, to make sure that, you know, they have, what I've done is, you know, business cards and invoices from where they've invoiced you. Well, actually, yeah, so, because we can operate pretty loosey-goosey along those lines. And my, my insurance guy suggested that um, I get agreements from all my subcontractors, not necessarily on a job-by-job -job basis. Yeah. But I mean, the, the according to yeah, I mean, according to Maryland unemployment, they don't care if you have those agreements because that doesn't mean according to Maryland unemployment, they're saying that that doesn't carry water. It's got to you have to have more than just those agreements. So, so the, I don't know your name, the roofer, Kurt. Kurt. Yes. Um, my name's Jeff. So, when, with your subcontractors, they do everything for you, right? Correct. Except for sell. I get, I'm assuming Correct. you sell. Correct. Well, I have I have salesmen that sell. Okay. That's something separate. So I have salesmen that they sell for me, and I 1099 them just on what they sell. So they make their own hours, they do their own thing, and that the roofers, I bid a job on how many square, and that's how they get paid on how many square it is and how many, you know. Your salespeople do, or your sub your My subcontractors do. Installers do, the yeah. subcontractors do. So they get paid on that, so they, I tell them this is what's gonna do, they'll give me an invoice at the end of the job, this is what they did, um, and that's how they get paid. So it's their trucks, um, you know, they, they can work for other people, but they know when I call, because I've had them forever, I'm, it's my job that's getting done. You know, if I, if I want something done tomorrow, it's getting done tomorrow because I've had them forever and, and I have steady work and, you know, whatever. But they have it, it, their own company. They can, you know, they work for other people as well. Um, so but I guess, like, are you making sure you're collecting proposals from these guys on every job or is it you just assign yeah, oh, work no. to them? No, no, at the, like, I, I'll pay them once a week and I get invoiced from them on all the jobs that they did for that week. And then your your subs have their own businesses oh, yeah. set up. They're Correct. they're registered with the state of Maryland. Right. They have their own um, their own LLC and all, all that. that right. Stuff, right. It's a fine line. From what I understand is is like my subcontractors. I can't go to my plumbers' employees and give them direction. Right. I right. have to go to the head of the plumbing company and talk to him. I cannot direct his employees. So it's it's a fine line. It really is. And I think. It's a percentage of the work that they do. For example, if my plumber did 98% of my work and 2% outside of that, I would think that anybody would consider him an employee and not a subcontractor. I, I don't remember what the exact figure is, but there is a figure on a percentage, and I don't know who has that percentage, whether it's the state, the feds, or the IRS that considers what percentage someone is a subcontractor. But I, because of the different agencies, I would encourage everyone to, to know that if you think you're walking a fine line. Yeah, I, yeah. I just I see them pushing on the rules because my plumber does all my work, but I know he's working for other guys, so I feel like I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. in the same position. I mean, I, yeah. my plumber works for a yeah. bunch of guys. Well, yeah, exactly. Right now, so I'm not I mean, most that. yeah. I mean, most most of the time, if they if they have their own business set up, they are incorporated. They have their own license. They have their own insurance. You're fine. You know that's that. You know it, it, they're gonna. It's gonna be awful hard for the IRS or, you know, the state to to say that they don't. Especially if they've also hired people to work for them. Right. So it's a little bit different if it's a one man show. Yeah, I've heard that the feds have uh, defined that coming up as swear 
if that person is depending on your paycheck to survive, then they're your employee. You know, they do a lot of little stuff, but mainly right. yours, and they depend on your check to like pay their bills, then they're definitely your employee. Yeah, but I think a lot of it's coming about because they're trying to they're trying to do away with a lot of the 1099. Right. Like That's exactly why they was that. Yeah. Like your his tr his trucker example. Is, you know. <clears throat> and, and a lot of people, a lot a lot of people do the go the 1099 route, and they think that they're covered, and you get away with that until something bad happens. And then when you get into the legal jam and you get lawyers involved, they find out that's their employee. They might, they might say they're not, but in the end, they're not going to win that argument. Right. I was just going to say, you talked about workers' comp, you talked about contracts. Um, we've seen more of, well, first of all, most companies that we work with um, request a certificate of insurance before you, a lot of times before you start doing any work. And certainly before they pay you. Um, and if your certificate expires, you know, because your renewal period, a lot of them will say, hey, we got a check, but we can't release it until you um, send us a new certificate. But one of the things that I have noticed is that some of the contracts that people send are like really long and really arduous, and there's a lot of, I mean, it seems that it would be great if there was sort of a standard, you know, contract that a lot of, what a marrier construction industry use it was pretty basic that you know hit all the key points which a lot of it has to do with a lot of it does talk about the employee thing you know that they're not that your employees are your employees not the contractors and some other things but it would just be simpler because then you'd already have seen that one and you don't have to go through because you like reading this thing and it's got like paragraph after paragraph and you're like well what's in here for me I mean and most of the time nothing so um, but anyway so that's we're seeing it you know definitely all right Anybody have any questions on that? All right. Um, how, Kurt, I mean, with the reliability, and I understand you've had your, your contractors for a long time, uh, reliability-wise and, you know, the, the quality of work or if they are at my house and they break my yard lamp, how do you handle that kind of stuff? Well, I bill it to them you know if they break something then they have to pay for it and if there's an issue with the job they go back and like I said I never have any problems because I've had them for so long they know that if you know they don't go back and take care of it then it's uh, it's gonna be I mean like this morning we did a roof um, yesterday for the rain and I went and checked the job today and there was you know, just some gravel on the paver so I called them up say hey, get out there and um, blow it off to you know clean it up so right. they were out there within an hour to you know to clean it up so I you know I it's been great for me because I know that it's I'm not eating it you know it wasn't you know there was a sub that screwed it up and he's going to take care of it and it's out of his pocket right. Andy how about you how do you handle those type of situations <clears throat> um, sort of the same thing I mean my subcontractors uh, respond very well to me um, I try to define very clearly what their role is and what they're supposed to do. And um, if there is an issue or a problem, uh, that's the beauty of the subcontractor. The subcontractor takes care of it versus uh, uh, if it's an employee that it comes right out of my bottom line. Right. So Mike, with you, from the, from the other end of it, you being the sub, and you, know, you end up having the disagreement uh, of whose responsibility that was or whose fault it was. How do you typically handle that? We don't, I, it's not usually like that. I mean, for, usually you're not gonna have a problem, but every so often there may be something. Typically just take care of it, whatever it is. I mean, a lot of what Kirk's saying is you have an ongoing relationship with mm -hmm. a lot of people. It's all part of like the job. They have to get the work, they have to satisfy the client, we have to do the work, so everyone's got their role. I mean, and if it's something, if you have something that continually is a problem, then you have a bigger problem than just that particular job. If it's something, you know, it's gravel or some issue, you know. Um, but there are times when maybe uh, somebody's doing something that they shouldn't or could do it better, and if you don't get the feedback or somebody doesn't tell you, you're not going to know. Because I can't go out to every job. We do lots of right. jobs every day. Um, so to some extent, we kind of rely on the contractor to give tell us something. Uh, but if there's a problem or anything, you want to take care of it immediately. Okay. Um, you know, Kurt, with, with your subs, how do you... Uh, deal with the scheduling because they are working for other people. I know earlier you said, hey, it's, you know, my job gets done first, but right. I mean, how, how do you end up dealing with that? Well, it's kind of different with 
my different crews, my window crew, I, I, my window sub, I just give it to them and they schedule with the homeowner. So he measuring, takes care of it, and does it with the, you know, measures them and they schedule down the line. As far as the roofing, I do it and I tell them, you know, when I'm going to do it. If they have something that's coming up, then, you know, another job, then I'll work with them to do it. But normally I just schedule it and it gets taken care of because, like I said, I am their biggest subcontract you know guy that they're working for so they're they're gonna defer to me okay andy how about you with scheduling the different the different subs and you know i have a this job over here that i have to do your stuff was pushed back a day i can't get to it um every job we do we provide a schedule for our homeowners and we usually schedule 30 days out, so all my subs know 30 days before they're supposed to be on the job site. So for me, I'm already penciled in. Um, if they're behind, I mean, sure, some things happen if somebody's a day late or whatever, but for the most part, we have consistency in subs showing up and performing and doing what they need to do. Okay. You know, Kurt, with the roofing and everything, with all the, the rain we've had, I mean, yeah. how does that, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the... My schedule gets blown up daily, so it's just the way it is so it, it that's not a big deal with my subs they're just instead of doing the job I thought they were going to be doing they're going to be doing a different job you know that day but it's, it's the call on the homeowner and you know saying it's not you know today it's going to be three days from now or whatever because of the schedule getting blown up with the weather but so because you've had the subs for so long how come you've never kind of gone back and just hired them as employees and, and brought them in-house and, and done that? Because, it, at least in my business with the, the roofing, the roofing trade, you can't compete. I mean, it's, they're probably, I don't know what percentage, but I'd say probably 95% of the companies out there that roof, you know, it's, at least in Anne Arundel County, they're all you subcontractors because you, you know, I'm very competitively priced and I'm <laughs> making a ton, but I can't even, you know, if I tried to have bring them in house, the well, you can tell you the insurance is outrageous for, mm -hmm. for a roofer. So it's, it's crazy. Okay. And, you know, and then the, the vehicles and all the other stuff. And then in the middle of winter time when they're not roofing, you know, when it's slow, then, you know, I don't know what I'm having them do. So okay. every, every kind of, kind of the win for everybody. Cause they like it in the winter time when we're slow and, they don't have to, you know, do anything, and I don't have to worry about paying anybody in the middle of winter time. So, right. so, so it's an overhead issue for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a over. It's all. I mean, the you budget. were stammering when you were talking about insurance. You know, What's so that? You were stammering when you were yeah. talking about insurance. Yeah, well, it's 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 a bunch of issues. I mean, it's the storing the vehicles. You know, having a lot to store the vehicles. It's it's a whole wide range of things that make me uh, a tighter run company. Just, you know, like when 2008, when the recession hit and, you know, companies were dropping left and right, I had no issues, you know, and I grew. I've grown every year that I've been in business. And I think it's because I'm a lean company that can, you know, when the downturns come and it does, it's not, it's not hurting me. So. What is, what is the percentage of insurance for workers? Oh, because <laughs> it doesn't affect me. Because it's it like $30 per 100 or something? Probably. Like $30, probably $30 per 100. Yeah. I pay, I pay 7.25, I think, for carpenters. But, yeah. so, so that tells you it's over four times as much for roofers. That's yeah, crazy. I, think it's, I think it's even more than that. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's high risk. Yeah. And the one thing you don't, and, and that's where uh, a lot of them may not be, they may or may not be documented. But if that guy's paying his work comp, his policy, he's got coverage, but he could be paying three, four guys under the table. But right, that's right. not that's not Kurt's problem. The guy's got a policy, he's got a work comp, he's working other places. That's up to him when he gets audited by his company. And you know, people are gonna do that. They're gonna find edges. There's no people are not gonna follow the book. But you have to cover yourself when you're hiring those people. As long as they have the policy and they're their employees. All right. Well, you, if I can ask Kurt another question, you go, since all you you got subs on the site all the time. What about what about branding and advertising issues? What stops them from taking work away from them in the neighborhood? That would be their last job. 
Why would you know? What's that? Why? Oh, I, I, I would. You know? I would eventually know. I mean, I, I, long time ago, I had a, a salesman that was actually working for me. Decided to start his own home improvement company. <laughs> Didn't understand why I fired him when he was selling same thing. You know, hey, I'm not gonna. So, you know, I'm just, right. you know, so uh, you eventually find out. You know, somebody if he does it, you know, he if they were to do it and that homeowner's not happy with that product, he's going to come back and hey, just to let you know, I was use you know, they're they're not going to do that, and they're not you know I'm treat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, and they're you know they'll when they're on job site they're wearing Chesapeake logos and stuff like that. Okay. So. Um, okay. What about um, so? What happens? So, if you can explain a little bit more of your process. So, when your phone rings, what happens? When my phone rings, it goes to an answering service, and then it comes to my phone. So, I get the call, and then I run the lead, or I send it to one of my sales guys to run a lead. And then, once the job is sold, it goes to whoever it's going to go to. Every, everything comes. I'm kind of. I've been doing this forever, but I'm everything so I'm the guy that's answering the phone I'm also one of the guys that's running the leads I'm also the guy that's setting the jobs up I'm the guy that's the bill collector <laughs> I'm doing everything so, so if you give it to a salesperson that salesperson goes and makes contact with the homeowner correct they develop the specs for you correct and then, and then they, they and then I pay them a percentage of what they sold on that job whatever that job costs that but then it's up to you to project manage it that, that's it's out of there it's a piece of paper to your sub no, no, I, I, they give it to me, I set it up for, you know, I have then the specs of whatever that job is gonna be, how many square roof or whatever it is. I call it, set it up with the homeowner, I order the material, I set the, the date, and then I tell the sub, you know, this job has to, you know, you go into the, this and job. who likes the final payment? You I, I, do it, I do it. Cause I wanna have contact with that homeowner, make sure he was happy and get the final payment with that, so I, I set the job up and I also at the end of the job um, and with the homeowner make sure that they're happy with the product and they have any questions or any issues to follow through. Can you do roofing and windows? And siding. Roofing everything on the outside of the house. We don't, Joe does everything on the inside of the house. I do everything on the outside of the house. So uh, Andy, if, knowing what you know through your years of work and stuff would you is there anything that you would change versus subs versus employees um, probably not because again my business model the business I run I could I don't think I could run my business without an employee without a key individual on the project I need to have ears on the ground on a job and looking out for my interests and no one's going to do that like an employee so that's the employee side of my business, but then I try to sub as much as I can. I try to keep my, the ears on the ground and the employees on a management position and then on specialty work to have some specialty type of work that they do in-house. Like we do carpentry in-house, we do demo in-house, we do certain pieces, uh, but we don't do large carpentry projects um, like framing an addition, big addition, or even trimming a big addition, but we'll do smaller. So it's sort of selecting the right fit, and I have that option, but which is gonna work better for me. But I don't think I'd change anything because I think my business, the way I run it, I need both subs and employees. I couldn't do it with just one or the other. I think it'd be very difficult. All right, Kurt, what about you? Oh, I definitely wouldn't change anything. I mean, like I was saying, I'm all on the outside of the house, so when the winter time comes and you know, it slows down. Well, if I have, because I probably subcontract, you know, at any one time, I got 30 guys going at different job sites. And I couldn't even imagine in the wintertime half, you know, all of a sudden we got a week worth of snow and I got 30 employees to pay, you know, I'd be out of business. I couldn't, I couldn't survive. So for me it is, you know, it's the best thing. And if I have 30 employees, that's why I, tell people too, I tell the customer, you know, homeowner if they ask about it, it's like, okay, if I have all these guys and I got a bunch of roofing jobs and my window guys aren't busy, all of a sudden they're windows, they're, they're doing a roof for you. Do you want your window guy putting a roof on your house? You know, they don't know. So my guys are 
specialized in what they do and that's all they do you know they do roofs every single day or they do windows every single day or they're putting vinyl siding or hardy siding every single day so you know but if i have employees all of a sudden i don't have any siding jobs going you know they're putting in windows today because i got to keep them busy i got to pay the pay the bill so it for me it's it's been the best thing and it's kept me lean and it it's a better price for the homeowner because i don't have to you know jack up my prices to pay for all this time when my employees are sitting around doing nothing you know washing my trucks or something because they don't have work to do so mike how about you um i'm sorry the, oh, wait, I so, the the question. yeah you've been in business for years and and um you know you primarily have an employees or you have all employees that work for you i mean knowing what you know now if you were to start over again, would you kind of do the same thing and go the employee route, or would you try to do it with uh, some contractors working for you? Um, I, it, we have to have employees. I mean, it's such a specialized trade, and you're not going to get competent people, and there's a learning curve. And um, Plus, our work is generally year-round, so it's not like... Um, but actually, why I was diverted, I was thinking more about why do people use subs or why do subs work for other people. And you, asked, Jeff asked, Kurt, why does you know, you know, why don't the people go out and sell roofs? You meant it more in a competitive way, like you know, why don't they just try to solicit the neighbor? But more importantly, why don't they just go and get in the roofing business? Well, because he provides a service and he has a you know, a sales, marketing, mm -hmm. a whole process. They don't. That's not their competency. On my end, that's not my problem. My problem is I'm only a component of a larger project. So a lot of the work we do has so many other pieces. So for example, if Andy or Joe do a bathroom, I'm not building a bathroom. I'm just doing the shower door and the mm -hmm. mirror. So I need them to do all those things to then do what I do. Um, the roofing guy, he could do it, but again, he doesn't have that expertise or that, that desire to, to do everything. So. so I think there's a place for everybody, oh, yeah. I guess is what I'm driving at. You know, it's just a question of what your role is. But specific to your answer, our business, we need employees. Does anybody have any questions for the panel? Okay. So you guys, you, know, like you talked about you buying materials. If you do subcontract, are you guys the ones? I'm sorry, are you looking at me? I can't. Or, for, or whoever okay, subcontracts, either okay. one you or Andy, basically. Okay. Are you guys, do you keep it in house with buying materials so that you have control over what's on that job, or do you allow your subs to do the purchasing of? Me personally, I purchase everything. Okay. They're just supplying the labor. Um, and are you the same way? Uh, I learned the hard way. I, I don't want to get into supplying electrical fixtures or plumbing fixtures because they're all specialty pieces. Um, and what ha and tile is another big one because what'll happen is is I'll go ahead and happens every time. I think I'm going to save money by purchasing the material myself, and then inevitably uh, something's wrong. I don't have a part for something. I don't have enough full nose for tile, I don't have enough specialty tile, and I spend more time running around getting that stuff. So I'm better on the specialty end, handing it over to my subcontractor and letting him do it complete. Uh, when it comes to uh, lumber, uh, you know, I purchase that. When it comes to um, roofing, I'll hire someone like Kirk, let him do the roofing piece of it. And it's the same thing, I don't want to supply the shingles because I'm not a roofer. I don't know everything they need and the components, and inevitably it's going to be a problematic if I get into that business. So for me, for my subcontractors, I want my subcontractors to su supply everything. Uh, Andy, can you tell, tell me more about the lead carpenter system you're working with? Sure. Um, he's basically the project manager. He's the liaison between myself and the homeowner. Uh, he's the person that knows the most about the job, hopefully more than I know, because he's in the trenches every day and he's dealing with everything every day. He's helping to accommodate the schedule. He's helping to accommodate the quality and you know, achieving a benchmark of completing the project on time when we tell the homeowner with the expectation level. So for me, typically what I try to do is I always take as many pictures as I can. Uh, and before I get to a uh, proposal stage, I put together a proposal for the homeowner. I go to contract. Once I have contract, I take all the specs and before that, lead goes to the job I educate that lead to the job and if you were here before with uh, got my jobs when Eric 
explain that system. We have that system. Uh, yeah, it's a project management system and also a timekeeping system. Uh, local uh, web designer here has developed it, and we've got the. I've got an app on my phone. We've got it in our computers, and we manage everything through that. But we, going back to answer your question, full circle. Basically, that lead is the heart of the project. He's the person that. Does he, does, is he the guy who does all the scheduling for the job? Or no, we do the scheduling. He follows the schedules, and uh, you know, in my business, the biggest challenge I have is change orders. I just I get change orders all the time, and that just kills our schedules and causes delays. And I'd rather not have change orders. You know, a lot of contractors say they love change orders, but for us, we'd rather we try to define a clear scope right out of the gate, and then once we do that, we empower that lead to take care of that project, and you know. From start to finish. Cool. Any other questions? The ones that have employees, do you do anything to keep them motivated? Keep uh, I don't know any. We do s surveys. So once a month, whoever has the most surveys gets a um, hundred dollars. So, do you guys do anything with your employees as far as any extra benefits? Um, well, I would say we try to keep improving the company, and, and I don't say that in just sort of a general sense. I mean, making material changes to the way we operate, certainly increase their income. Uh, a lot of them have gone from used vehicles to new vehicles, so things that, you know, they benefit directly. Obviously, income's a big thing, because when people see, you know, increased income, that puts money in their pocket, and that's certainly, that's also recognition to them and also to their family that they're performing and that they're making a contribution. So I think that's, you know, um, in, in terms of the monthly, no, we haven't, you know, I, ultimately we'd probably like to have some sort of program, but it's just hard to, there's just so many things to do every day, and that's one of the challenges to how to figure out a, a program that you can administrate continually. Yeah, for us, we have uh, vacation pay, we have uh, holidays, we have personal leave, um, uh, life insurance, and I think a good working environment. I mean, I think that um, we thought internally of uh, the person that I work with in my office and I about having a carrot or leading them, but honestly, I, I just think just providing a good working environment and a pl good place to work is a real plus for us. Um, I've had employees for one employee for 15 years, another for 10. I mean, I've had, I don't really turn employees over, so um, it's a kind of a tight knit organization from that standpoint. Is that, is that the extent, Leaf Carp, is that the extent of your employees? Yeah. You have, you have a couple laborers hovering around or a facilitator? Or I, I don't know what a laborer is. I, I've never had success with laborers. Laborers are limited in what they can do um, because they either learn and become more, and then I'm training them to be more, and or they don't want to learn more, and then I have to ha have work for a laborer all the time. And I, I just, I, I use mostly subcontractors, other, and I use leads. And the leads, like I said, we do the specialty work. We do the guts when we go into the house, like I said, the demo. Because it's we've got to do a lot of protection and put plastic up and protect areas and clean and all these things that are integral parts of the job. And that's the other thing with a lead. A lead will make sure that the job site's clean and that the subs will leave the job site clean. Because any time that dirt starts accumulating, stuff starts to lay around, everybody just piles in and throws stuff around. So, And that's... For my business, that's a killer. That's the worst part, going into people's homes and leaving messes. Any questions? Do most of you guys advertise, or is it mostly word of mouth, or how are you generating most of the business? Uh, for me, I do a lot of work for architects. So I probably have half a dozen, eight architects that I do work for. Um, I have a lot of referral base. I've been in business for 35 years, so I have a lot of referral base work. I have a lot of repeat customers. Um, and I have what I call the modern yellow pages. I get a lot of hits on my website. I probably average one or two calls a week just from my website or Google search. Uh, for me, it's, I've been in business 30 years, so I'd say probably 75% is from referrals. Um, 
The next biggest one would definitely be you know Google on, on clicking on my website, um, and I don't know how many of those are from referrals that are you know still going to the website. But I you know the next biggest is Google or just directly from my website. And I do some Val Pack advertising, a little bit of direct mail advertising, um, but the biggest one is just referrals and previous customers. And now, being in business so long, everyone's had the roof; they're going to their second roof, or they moved to a different house and they need another roof. Or wind is the same thing. So, I finally, or you guys get it every year, <laughs> renew every year of business. I'm I'm 25 years out before I get them again. So I'm finally I've been in business long enough that I'm getting coming coming around again. Our business is primarily referrals as well. I mean, the, the thing is, especially with insurance, is if somebody says these people will treat you right and they have a name recognition, you have a probably a 90% chance of ending up with that business as opposed to trying to sell a stranger on something. How about you? Well, we don't, since we're not really dealing directly with the end user, um, we, we used to years ago, and when we did just mirrors, but since most of it is more, again, shower doors and things like that, we're mainly working with uh, contractors and builders. So a lot of that is ongoing, you know, we get referral business. So, we, you know, we do call on people and try to, you know, introduce ourselves and go to networking events, things like that. But we don't, we're not going out there to the general public at large. So what type of client are you looking for? What kind? Like Joe and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> Lots of them. We're just going to clone them. All right. There's no more questions. Guys, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate Thank it. You.